In this video, we'll go from the broad to the specific, starting with the function thinking, and then the function attitude, introverted thinking, and then the flavor holistic introverted thinking, and finally, how it shows up in relationships. This is video number 12 in a series of 16. If you're watching the series, there will be some repetition, but in case this is the one and only video you watch, I want you to have all the information. So feel free to make use of the chapter markers in the description. My main references for this video are doctors Carl Gustav Jung and Dario Nardi. Jung was a Swiss psychiatrist who published his theory of psychological types in 1921, and Dario is a prolific researcher and author. He found evidence of psychological type in the neuroscience data captured by EEG assessments that he's been doing with people from all walks of life since 2006. And in case we haven't met, my name is Doris Fulgrabe. I'm a certified coach with a master's in applied psychology, and I help people create happier, healthier relationships. A couple of caveats before we begin, just to manage expectations and again in case this is the only video you watch. Number one, these videos describe the functions in their purest state. Functions rarely show up in their purest state as they interact with other functions and your brain is really active doing multiple things at any given time, like it's regulating your body temperature and heart rate right now. So you may not resonate with 100% of the description of the function 100% of the time, and that's okay. Number two, these videos describe the function for this function type. You may not be this function type, which means this function may or may not be at the top or dominant in your consciousness. And that's okay too, because it's still in your system, you still have access to it, and paying attention to this function may help you recognize when it pops up out of your subconscious, so then you can practice integrating it consciously. With that, the thinking function is one of the two rational judging functions. Rational because it involves reasoning, i.e. a process of reflection, and judging because it's about making decisions. The thinking function helps us be logical, analytical, effective and efficient. It gives us the ability to plan ahead and a curiosity about how things work. It is committed to justice and equality, fairness and intellectual freedom, but also step-by-step -step rules that lead to results. Dr. Linda Behrens describes it in this way. Thinking is a process of evaluating and making judgments based on objective criteria and principles or logic. Using this process, we detach ourselves from our values and seek to make decisions based on principles alone. Activities like discrimination according to a set of criteria or objectively defined standards, analysis according to a set of principles, logic and cause-effect reasoning are all examples of making thinking judgments. Moving on to the function attitude, introverted thinking, which is the dominant function for INTP and ISTP types. What follows are Jung's words and his language from 100 years ago is a little different from how we speak today. He's quite male-centric, so he uses he, him when describing all the functions that aren't feeling. And he also uses the word object to refer to anything and anyone outside of you and subject to refer to yourself or the person. Jung says, introverted thinking is primarily oriented by the subjective factor. External facts are not the aim and origin of its thinking, though the introvert would often like to make his thinking appear so. New views rather than knowledge of new facts are its main concerns. It formulates questions and creates theories. It opens up new prospects and insights. But with regard to facts, its attitude is one of reserve. They are all very well as illustrative examples, but they must not be allowed to predominate. Facts are collected as evidence for a theory, never for their own sake. The creative power of introverted thinking shows itself when it actually creates an idea which, though not inherent in the concrete fact, is yet the most suitable abstract expression of it. In other words, introverted thinking types believe themselves to be most realistic and evidence-based, but a lot of their evidence is actually run through a subjective internal filter to the point where they might ignore facts that don't fit their theory. It reminded me of that saying, you mustn't let the truth get in the way of a good story. Right? But the introverted thinking type would be horrified to be accused of this very thing. Or as Jung puts it, the subjective power of conviction exerted by an idea is usually very great and it is all the greater the less it comes into contact with external facts. Jung describes the introverted thinking type as someone who follows his idea inwards with the goal of an intensity, not extensity, so depth, not breadth. To do that, the introvert removes himself from the external object and if this object is a person, this person has a distinct feeling that he matters only in a negative way. 
Jung says it's this distancing that makes the introverted thinking type ex exceedingly difficult to know because everything about him tends to disappear and get concealed. His judgment appears cold, inflexible, arbitrary and ruthless, and it always bypasses the object and leaves one with the feeling of the subject's superiority. He may be polite, amiable and kind, but one is constantly aware of a certain uneasiness betraying an ulterior motive, the disarming of an opponent. In other words, these types are easily misunderstood as aloof or proud, when their brains are wired to solve problems, applying universal principles and withdrawing from the world and everyone in it to do so. Jung also describes introverted thinking types as socially awkward and painfully anxious, uninterested in anyone liking them or their ideas, and yet completely vulnerable to being exploited by others. Ambitious women have only to know how to take advantage of his cluelessness in practical matters to make an easy prey of him, he says. His ideas also make sense in his head, but are a lot harder to explain or translate into actual products or objects. Generally speaking, people of these types are slow burners. Casual acquaintances think him inconsiderate and domineering, but the better no one knows him, the more favorable one's judgment becomes, and his closest friends value his intimacy very highly. The more one-sided this type is, the more rigid his thinking and the greater his touchiness. He'll try to protect himself by isolating, which tends to spiral him deeper. So it's important to keep one foot grounded in the external world and that this type surrounds himself or herself with trustworthy friends. So much for the function and the function attitude. Now we're moving into the flavor. And this one is going to be holistic, which is focused on getting input and going with the flow. It's more open ended and looks like patience and relaxation. That's not to say it's flaky. It considers all aspects at once, which allows it to connect ideas in fresh and new ways. Its approach is bottom up, open to discovery and synergy, wherever the data might lead. People of the style like to find new tools and solutions, and they are so aware of their own biases that they might lack the confidence to make a change. The style is often more auditory. It pays attention it pays attention to how things are said, but also ethics, intentions and emotions. Thinking is often figurative and might focus on identity and values, and they often use metaphors. In business, it's more comfortable with an egalitarian and collaborative approach. Likely careers for these types with a holistic style include creative arts, social services, humanistic pursuits, soft sciences and multiculturalism. Dario calls the holistic introverted thinking type the systemist or systemism. These types take multiple points of view and are more flexible in their perspectives. They find patterns in the chaos and are familiar with and able to use multiple models when solving problems. As an aside, and this is something I also probably should have mentioned in all the other videos, but for this type it becomes really clear to me, is that as we age, ideally we balance analytic and holistic versions of both our dominant and auxiliary uh, or supportive functions to help us become more well-rounded adults. Dario's research suggests that our brain wires itself to the jobs we have and the things we do regularly. So for this and all other functions as well, the flavor with which you use them may depend on your career or hobbies at any given time. And so the holistic introverted thinking type notices how systems scale, how they interact. And instead of clinging to one definitive framework, they broadly apply several principles in a fluid way. They see people, art, nature and technology as all interrelated and are happy to discuss different opinions, which makes them appear a lot more open and approachable than their analytic siblings. If holistic introverted thinking is less developed, their brains might feel quite scattered, but with time and maturity, they understand and find leverage in the messiness of life. So I want to preface the relationship portion of these videos by saying that all types can and do have relationships with all other types. Just like you wouldn't hire an employee based on their type, you shouldn't choose your partner solely based on their type either. Yes, it explains a lot, but people are a lot more complex. And yes, this is the best framework I know to understand and then bridge our differences no matter who we're with. Also, to my knowledge, there is no reliable statistical research into people's types and sexual preferences as yet. So what I suggest may or may not resonate. However, if you'd like to take part in such research, please email me. In dating, you're probably attracted to this type's intellect and find their quirkiness charming. 
I think introductions from friends are a great way to get together. And once you know each other a bit, then you might venture out alone, go for a walk and talk all night about life, the universe and everything. Again, Jung describes this type as having a vague fear of the feminine sex, so you might have to be the one making the first move, but this could also refer to their general discomfort with emotional displays. Remember, Jung wrote this 100 years ago, and society was much more clearly delineated by gender then. If you're an introverted thinking type and you were raised a woman, you've also been battling against societal expectations, and if men of this type are misunderstood, women are even more so. And there's a short research paper that discusses INTP women across cultures, which I'll link in the description. In mating, introverted thinking types are really comfortable in their heads and with many ideas or problems, it's enough for them to tinker and think it through without then having to go out and actually produce or make something. All that to say, the sexual act itself may not hold much interest if they can feel the loving relationship connection through conversation or time spent together or any other non-sexual way. On the other hand, they can also understand sex as a meaningful part of the system that is your relationship, in which case they might make it a point to develop competence and be open to exploring different pleasure avenues. Where sensation and intuition are about experiencing and fantasizing, this is at its core a rational judging function. So in a way, sex has to make sense. And if you're not also a dominant introverted thinking type, discussing the merits of physical intercourse can seem unusual, but that's why we have this type framework to give us the language to do so, appreciating one another's differences. In relating as partners, holistic introverted thinking types are unlikely to be the life of a party, but one on one, they likely focus a lot of their attention on you and regale you with all the interesting tidbits they read or learned or experienced that day. Since they're pretty detached observers, they'll help you sort through any friend or family drama. You may relate to them with a good sense of humor, and they also tell you straight up when you should be more logical and less emotional. I'll also repeat what I mentioned yesterday, that these types may often feel misunderstood, in large part because they genuinely don't realize that they didn't actually have the conversation with you out loud, but that only happened in their heads. Again, this information is meant as an overview of the function and its flavor. It cannot describe all the nuances and individual idiosyncrasies, but I hope you have a better idea. If you think you are a holistic introverted thinking type or have a partner who is, please add your comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for analytic extroverted feeling. Until then, feel free to check out this video next. I'll see you there.